काउंटर पॉइंट कार्यावीन तुमका यौकार मनोहर पर्रीकर सरकार जे सत्ते आये तीन एक घोषणा के लिए कि देर विल बी नो टॉलरन्स टुवर्ड्स करप्शन जीरो टॉलरन्स टुवर्ड्स करप्शन या वे एक खाया सगैंकी नजर आशी ती मे दक्षता खायाक तंो भ्रष्टाचार विरोधी विभाग एंटी करप्शन ब्यूरो ऑफ विजिल्स डिपार्टमेंट हम सद्या आसा बॉस्को जॉर्ज इज सुप्रिंटेंडेंट ऑफ पुलिस हि हेड्स दीज डिपार्टमेंट आ सग नजर तंजे कसान तंजे डिपार्टमेंटा कहीं आसा यू टेलर्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू बुक्ड कवड़ेकर फॉर समथिंग लाइक प्रॉपर्टीज इन केरला बट यू स्पेड इम फॉर आई डी सी वाई इज दीस देर इज नो स्पेरिंग फॉर आई डी सी आई डी सी हि वॉज द चेयरमेन एंड देर वॉज सर्टन अलॉटमेंट स्टन ऑफ प्लॉट्स द प्लॉट्स दैट वर अलॉटेड वर वेरी आर्बिट्री वी हैव ब्रॉड दिस आउट इन आवर फाइंडिंग्स and we have submitted to the government you have submitted your report report to the government that these are all the lacunas lapses that are there in this report uh, the, uh, regarding the allotment of plots by idc question is only this that it was very ambiguous the uh, entire allotments of the plots there were no proper guidelines so everyone they would take the plea that we allotted as per the decision of the board the board is supreme now on what basis are we going to charge him criminality based on this the when our report went to the gov- to the government i think the chief minister is also the chairman of idc he said that this uh, report should be placed before the board of idc and at that time a decision would be taken regarding forming of proper guidelines regarding scrapping of the allotments and all these things so action has been taken. no but basic essence basic essence of uh, giving this entire investigation to a body like anti corruption bureau was to find out a mole in the in the entire system who did this for whom and who actually got benefited that has not been met no we uh, we have seen that many of the plots were allotted to the relatives friends of the members of idc so but then after they say does it stop us from allotting it to them see the question will uh, whether there is a conflict of interest no because all decisions are taken by the board the chairman of the board says it's a decision of the board so yes still we can show that there were guidelines rules that were uh, subverted or changed then yes then we can say some criminal but they have taken uh, benefit from the flaws within the rules that's what the, right. yeah because it was there were no proper rules it was all ambiguous anybody could go suppose i know him i know the chairman i know anyone i'm uh, the fr- i'm a friend or connected with one of the board members we put a resolution it is like in the panchay pass a resolution yes the, uh, this thing is allotted to you now if he sublets then after he informs the boards then the board says okay you pay you keep paying some fine over there it is this it is regularized so all these things were there it was going on within the no board. but for a common man to understand was there a corruption or there was no corruption see you will uh, uh, you will have to uh, keep this in mind that it's a two way party both parties are happy nobody is uh, uh, complaining regarding this you scratch my back i scratch your back no, but property so, was state owned properties they no were it, again it is not that they bought the property it is these are leased out allotted there are n number of uh, allotees so whether it is through uh, lotteries or something or whether it is some discretion that is used by the board so all of them someone has to come forward and say that yes i was deprived when i was entitled i think that no one has come forward but in, in this, this case, case state was the, the complainant uh, not the state but the idc was the uh, the general manager law he has lodged a complaint uh, in two cases with us that uh, these were some arbitrary uh, this thing allotments done and hence we have taken cognizance of back to main issue kawrekas you found out some property in kerala worth some 5 crores of rupees and you have initiated preliminary inquiry into that can you just tell us basics of this uh, case what exactly is this case see there are 
13 properties of, uh, and I understand they are rubber plantations, which were bought in the state of Kerala. Now, nine of these properties are worth 26 lakhs. One property is worth about 2.50 uh, crores. Two are about 34 lakhs, one are about 17 lakhs. So in this way, these were investments that were done of, for land holdings in the state of Kerala. Fine, there's nothing wrong in it. And they were and all of them are registered in the name of Mr. Babu Kaulekar. And the right word would be Chandrakant Babu Kaulekar. They're legally purchased. Probably. Legally purchased. Question is, whether they are legal or illegal is our duty to find out. Now he has to make certain declarations at the time of filing his nomination. That what does he own? What are his investments? What are his fixed FDs? Now these are not made in, that, uh, in the nomination at the time of filing his nomination. So I have to presume that these are illegal investments. I could have so more to registered a case under disproportionate assets, but I do believe that we have to give him a chance to appear before the ACB and explain that whether these are his investments or how did he get this money and make these investments. Because till such time, I have to presume that there were kickbacks from the when, during his term as an IDC chairman, when where he was a public servant, that he has made his investment. No, but uh, in this case, there is no complainant. It's Suomoto by ACB. It is, it's a source information that I have received and it's on the source's information. And the source information is uh, in the form of RTI that have been procured from the sub-registrar in uh, the state of Kerala where these things are there. So I have to presume that there is prima facie a case. So just because he didn't mention them in, their, in his affidavit before the election commission, that raised suspicion? I don't think it is just that. It raises a full suspicion from where did he get so much money to invest. It's not one or two lakhs or not ten lakhs. It's five crores of rupees. Then how do you link it directly to his position as IDC chairman? He could have earned it from some other source. So let him explain. No? That's what we have said. Let him explain. And why didn't he de declare it? If it is his own, you should declare it. No? So now if, if he proves that these properties were legally brought, then he's out of this case. Obviously. And what happens that he has not mentioned them in the affidavit? Now who will look after that? I think that, that uh, the chief electoral uh, officer, they should take cognizance of it rather than we taking. Our point is whether this money he, uh, he has uh, through this uh, he has made investments through illegal means and we have to presume that yes he was a public servant during uh, the 10 years that uh, these uh, properties were bought otherwise uh, so much of property in such a place in Kerala is it does raise a lot of suspicion a question mark when Parikar government came to power there was a huge task before you that uh, you have to investigate recruitment scam in health, recruitment scam in mining, all the places. Now we have not heard anything after that. No one has been booked. We, we thought some ministers would be booked the way CM made announcement that some ministers would be booked. It's a rampant case of corruption. Now as a person who headed the entire investigation, tell us was it corruption and what happened to all those cases? Uh, majority or practically all recruitment cases that were done were done in a very haphazard manner which I and we have submitted reports to the government. It lacked transparency, it lacked uh, the procedures were jumped, they had to meet certain deadlines because of the, this thing. So we have brought out all these facts before the, this thing. But as I would say they are more of irregularities rather than we, because no one will come forward to say that money has been exchanged or paid of that sort. But all these irregularities we have brought forward to, we have submitted a report to the government. Now government has to, may, will like to take a call, with a, because most of it is, as I would say, is irregular, irregularities rather than of in the, well, in the sphere of corruption. Irregularities in recruitment rules. Interesting rules, rules yes. So, and I think government has taken a call in the sense they have scrapped 
most of the uh, recruitment. One of the cases in, uh, we have registered a case that is uh, the RTO officers. So we have re registered against the selection committee of the uh, RTO, the scrutiny committee of the RTO, and also the 26 people or the 19 people who were recruited, they also become accused in this case. Now what happens if these charges of corruption are proved? Even those people who were recruited would also have been both. Obviously. Now I'll give a simple, okay, uh, simple uh, this thing, like why we say that, you know, this, uh, it was a, uh, this thing, there is corruption involved. There is a certain benchmark. To become an RTO officer, you require a diploma, diploma in mechanical engineering. There were some people who even produced diesel mechanic and became RTO officers. So it was the duty of the scrutiny, scrutiny committee to weed off such people. The, uh, the experience certificates that were with this thing, practically from one particular mechanic only, all of them uh, got the, this thing. Now, these are things which I think the RTO sh themselves should have this thing. So here you have a proof against someone, that's why you have booked them. Every time we see you saying ki there was no proof of corruption, that's why you submit a report to the government and that's considered a logical end to the case. So, it, it doesn't actually go to the logical end. Those people who have paid money, those people who have accepted money, they still remain scot -free. The persons who have paid money, either they have to come forward and say, yes, we have paid. Now, I, uh, that we paid this money and that's how we got into this thing. I think then we can, t then we can uh, uh, take a call and book those people without actually revealing the name of the persons who have uh, come and uh, informed us about this, uh, this thing. But did you did in this recruitment thing? Did you uh, ask those youths whether you paid money? Obviously. What was their response? Definitely. No, that's what I say. No one is coming forward. No one wants to come forward. They are all hoping against hope that they will get recruited once again. So the entire process ended after giving a report to the state government. Yes. One and more, uh, and the government has, I think, scrapped those scrapped other things. Scrapped One more thing. You are literally sitting on investigations of SEZ allotment. Mm -hmm. Here at least there is a lot of things which you can dig out, a lot of investigation can be done and people can be booked. That also is not happening with you. I, I would say it's not happening. You, you have to understand this SCZ were allotted seven to eight years back, right? Now, they are companies. We cannot just go about arresting the people in the companies and uh, uh, putting them behind bars. Reason being, there were certain contracts, there was a certain policy that was there in place. You have to also understand that there is also a case going on in the High Court to decide whether it was wrongfully or rightfully allotted. Okay. Over this period, many of them have left the company. New persons have come into the company in those positions, whether it's company secretary, sheikhs, MD and all. So yes, it's taking time for us to get to the root of all this. We have got some documentation and we are confronting the persons who have come forward. What does this document? Here is the, this thing that was allotted to you all. This was the amount that was paid exactly on that uh, particular day. How did you all get all this? So when he, he says, yes, I, I can't explain because I was not the person at that point of time. So that person has moved on to another company. 